Oh, right. Gonna get started. New weapon stream. Let's get a few people coming in. All right, so I know I kind of teased it on the Discord, I think uh, two days ago, as to what I was working on next. And people were trying to take a few guesses as to what weapon it is. And I gave them the hint it's a World War II era pistol. So let's see. Also, uh, as people are coming in here, good reminder that started the community challenge section on the discord and the new theme is up so for the new community challenge what you have to do is create a health item for a video game be anything it can be you know first aid kit medic bag some sort of injectable syringe thing some sort of health item for a video game and it's got to be obvious you know if you were to play or how would you use it how would you interact with it uh, it's got to be obvious that this is your health item. And prize for this community challenge is a standard edition copy of Escape from Tarkov. So I'll drop in reference in a little bit. screen okay screencast keys are up and i am just gonna get started this, duplicate it, I'm going to size this down, Doesn't do that? No, it doesn't do that. Okay. Refresh you. Yes, yes, I need a medic bag for my challenge. And that is in the Discord. Check it out.
is way too small. It's not the L I'm looking for. Oh, all right. Just can drop in. All right, so I said in the Discord that the next weapon design is gonna be a World War II era pistol. And someone had guessed a uh, German 9mm Luger. Close. They're a millimeter short and a theater apart. Which is a millimeter high. Let's see, what's the good what's a good background reference? I'm looking at my reference on the other monitor and figuring out which which picture I want to drop in. Okay, all right, so which, which picture do I want to bring in here? Okay, this is it. So, weapon reveal. Japanese Nambu Type 14. Hello, Beendar. Alright, so we're gonna get started on this. I want to see if I can basically do this at least semi non destructively, like I've shown in past videos. Actually, I'm going to set up the uh, reference for the other side as well.
How long are we streaming? Uh, we'll see. I'm gonna try. I think I'm trying to go for about. I think I have about like two hours, maybe three hours, that I can do today. So I want to see how far I can get in this. So the trigger group is kind of separate here. But you know what, I'll instantly just give this a solidify so that we're working with a little bit of form. And what happens if I give this a mirror modifier with a bisect? Does that work? That does not really work. All right, so the trigger grouping is kind of separate. And I can bring in some of my reference over here. I'll just save that. So I've got a whole bunch of reference that I'm working on on my little pure ref board. And right now we're working for the, we're work, gonna work on this mainframe of the pistol. There's a lot of good uh, disassembly of all the parts that I'm looking at. And you can find a lot of good videos, especially for this model of pistol. I don't know if I really want to model like a full teardown with all the parts like this, but uh, we'll go for as high detailed as we can and then just kind of build from there. Still, the goal is kind of just something that's more of a, a game asset. The main goal is to build this frame to start with. You know what? We should also drop just in for just for a visual block. It. Let's drop in a barrel. So. Do a, we'll do a 24 sided cylinder. Oh, this is still on the mirror. I don't want that. Separate that part. Delete these modifiers from the barrel. Let's go into edit mode now. According to the dimension charts I saw, it said a hundred, it said 117 millimeters for the barrel length. Now, the pistol, the, the handgun's total length is 230 millimeters, so that's half of it. I mean, that seems about right if I'm kind of judging where the main center line of this is. So bullet gets, bullet gets chambered right about there. Let's put another edge loop right here. And drag this a little bit forward, scale it down and then extrude that to the front. Okay. Now, since we know the bullet's, di uh, bullet's diameter is eight millimeters, how about we just go ahead, drop in a separate cylinder. And yeah, let's try, we'll make that Eight millimeters. And we'll 
make sure that's kind of centered in our barrel. Actually, we can just do it by selecting this face, cursor to selection. We'll set, uh, yeah. You know what? Set the origin back to the center of the geometry on this one. Then selection to cursor. Now we know it's right there in the center of the barrel. So I don't have to worry about my, uh, I don't have to worry about it being offset. As long as we got, do we have this barrel in the right position? Looks like it should get a little bit smaller, but okay, we, we can do that. Looks like even from this neck right here that the barrel's diameter kind of shrinks a little bit. You know what? I'm gonna drag this edge loop more towards the end here and then scale this. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna be doing a chill. Just, just chill 3D modeling stream for a while, boys. save file. I'm just going to save it real quick. You're probably not going to see this window open because I have it set that it's only showing, showing my main Blender workspace. Just give this a quick save. Nambu type 14. All right. Now mainframe. Mainframe. Bring up the reference. Try to do that as non-destructively as possible. Okay, so you know what? We know that this is probably going to be a little bit thicker. I can't find the exact dimension on the mainframe of the pistol, but I can kind of kind of judge it. Give that a little bit more width. All right. So how does that match up with the the overall neck? Well, today, today, let's see if we can get high poly done. I do, but I do want to get this to, um, I do like to create everything more into a game asset, so we would do the mid and low poly as well. Thank you. 
just going to use the shear tool right here. Been using the solidified planes well uh it's actually a lot less vertices to manipulate beginning on and it's a more destruct uh, non-destructive way to work so i can quickly easily adjust the thickness here and just kind of affect everything a little bit more holistically now eventually eventually a lot of this gets uh applied down but for when i want to just cut out the shape of everything. Yeah, I could use cubes probably pretty easily, but using just solidified planes allows me quite a bit more control, especially when we're just starting like this. Bring back up my reference. There are two variations of this little the rear little charging handle talking knob. Right, both of the both of these have the same version. This is the one I want to do. Okay.
<laughs> so, you know, someone else had said uh, Luger in the Discord. And nope, nope, you're, uh, like I said, you're a millimeter too high and a theater apart. But they are very similar. In fact, which one? I don't know which one uh, came first. And if the design of Nambu influenced Luger, or if it was the other way around, I'd have to... I can't recall. I'd have to take a closer look at the history. shape profile of what that trigger card's going to look like because then I can just steal geometry from this to make it These faces are all basically just going to get deleted, and I'm going to merge those together. Just temporary to kind of use as a placeholder. joining a little bit more of that together just trying to get the correct profile for this trigger guard Maybe I could have used a curve object instead.
be just fine to weaken with a little bit of a. No, that's too much. There we go. All right, a little proportional editing. Let's see. Leave that in there for right now. It's just going to be more work on that trigger assembly. Okay, this whole this whole ring can just go in a little bit. be adjusting the thickness and profile over this basics move what we want right there okay because I'm still using solidify and I don't know if I don't think I want to do that wait till I apply that solidify modifier
to one bevel and that.
I need to get that bevel to just the right shape profile that I want it. See, that's why I want those uh, solidify modifiers so I kind of just, just the width and girth of this frame of the pistol right here. We'll do that after we extend this little barrel part back. And I'm looking at some of my reference of the uh, assemblies of the gun. In fact, I think, who is it? I think it's Forgotten Weapons who has a fold assembly of it. You can find a lot of good ones, at least of this pistol, on YouTube. I might reference to a few of those at some point uh, during this. Change it. Oh, that's right, because I was scaling it. Right, so let me. That matches good there. And I'll up this thickness a little bit more. That actually looks pretty accurate to the reference I'm looking at. Now, yeah, now the, uh, the frame is is certainly coming along now. In fact, you know what? Why not? the shape profile of it is changed. Okay, so what if I did that? All right. Obviously, I don't want that shape profile, but... Yeah, something like that would make progress. Maybe we shouldn't do that yet. Yeah, okay. Few of the doubled up vertices there. And what about this little lip right here?
Okay, we'll select this one, we'll select active element, and we'll select that edge. Active element, normal, and then scale it on, first grab it, push it back a little bit. If I scale on X to zero, does that work? Rotation. this edge just straight? I'm trying to look at this frame and I can't tell if it curves down there or if it's just... No, it's got a little bit of a curve. Yeah, we're doing uh, Nambu Type 14. Messes me up sometimes. All right, did I switch it off? All right, back to median point. Turn off proportional editing. Scaling these accordingly. All right, and I'm gonna take that face, and that face. I'm gonna inset those a little bit. to selected <laughs> I do like the rhino and that is a that's a definitely a uh, a good weapon to pick if you're going to do some uh, major topology studies too it's not I mean it's not going to be a simple one to model and it'll look impressive if you can uh, if you can do it well it'd be a great portfolio piece I mean, they've been around for a long time, but they still look so... Yeah, they still look so badass. Actually, to do this, I should actually be scaling this whole piece up a little further.
to scale each of these rings a little bit more. No, not by median point. Let's do by individual origin. Scale, shift, Y. Is it giving me some weird norm? Yeah, because I have it set to normal. Okay, set everything back to vanilla. Okay, so we're on individual origin and on global transformation. Okay, scale, shift, Y. There we go. That's what we're looking for. And this is going to be our Boolean object. We'll do a mirror on the Z axis. looking pretty accurate. Automag 44. Really difficulty finding reference for it? Seems like, you know, I mean, it's been around for some time. Seeing some pictures of Dirty Harry wielding it, so there should be a good amount of reference and even blueprints and schematics out there. But it looks more like a sports competition pistol, kind of. Trying to do all the internal parts. Have you found any good, uh, you know, find some disassembly videos on YouTube? rest of this little trigger uh, assembly. All right, so let's see, what, what sort of length are we getting on some of these? Will it work if I do the overlays? Edge, let's do edge length. No, it doesn't want to show me because it's still on a solidify modifier. Don't they have like another add-on or something that does better, uh, better like size and CAD measurements for Blender? I thought I had seen someone using something like that. This is supposed to be part of that assembly right there. Okay, so you know what? I can probably just separate this part of the selection. Let me just hide that little cube right now. Is that supposed to be part of the uh, trigger assembly, not the frame of the pistol?
Uh, no, you can just go to, uh... Well, that's why I was asking. I thought there was another one that showed, um, like, better measurement and angle data for Blender. This is just the default. You go to your overlays, drop down here, and you have all your measurements, edge length, face area, face angle, all of that. Oh, the Engon philosophy question. Deep philosophical question. Uh, basically, doing the whole block out and probably a good percentage of the high poly, I'm much, much less worried about Engons as long as I keep them from creating any shading errors. And then when I go to low poly and game asset, yeah, everything, everything has to get cleaned up, but yeah. Especially in these blockouts, I'm working in a sub D and Boolean workflow, so I expect to uh, cut things up and make a mess quite a bit. Hide that one for now. Oh, no, just double double check. Did that in edit mode? Not what I want to do. All right. Just click one of them, hide it for now, because I'll use it. And then I'm just going to use this one as a Boolean. Save. <laughs> No blender can complain with me, even when I'm just doing regular sub D boolean stuff, it's nothing complicated. Oh wait, but this has a mirror modifier, so I just have to... Oh, that worked. Since this is a straight edge, and that means grab all of this, duplicate it, T to separate the selection, grab this little, little chain of. Uh, just these little verts right here. All right, I'm going to get rid of this. Solidify, get rid of the boolean, and get rid of the mirror for right now. So, switch to normal. Active movie, active element. Yes. Drag it back. How how wide is this magazine? All right. So let's let's just say. Time being, magazine goes from there to there. A little bit extended here. Okay. 
make sure those normals are working. All right, and how about we just drop some reference right on it so I know what I'm looking at. I know I've got magazine reference here. Type 14 mag. All right, there's a few variations, but I think I think this is the right Nambu 14 mag. Oh, that's big. This magazine. the opacity on this a little bit. Looks like it's reversed. Facing the wrong direction. Let's see, do I have another have other reference? Let's, let's try it with this one. Do scale y minus one? No, that was. Let's try scale x minus one. All right, it's flipped. accurately to our previous reference. I know there's a little bit of different uh, perspective skewing on it, but let's just say if this knob here matches up, then it's a match. Which it kind of is. Let's see. I think I have an x-ray view sort of image of this. Let's see if that sort of concurs what we're looking at here. Yeah, here we are. Yeah, that kind of good enough for me. Good enough for me. I'm not going for absolute accuracy, cat dimensions sort of stuff here. The end goal is still kind of a game asset. All right. Where's my, where's that magazine part? Okay. Good. Let's say, let's just say it's accurate. Let's give this the same treatment. Start with a solidify, a mirror modifier. Just turn on the little vertice controls here. And 
and there was a cylinder that I hid as the extra little knob back up right there. That might be a little bit too wide, but we'll change it. And let's see about the little shape on the bottom of the mag here. Just look at a little bit of reference, see how ideally how wide this is supposed to be. Matches up with the grip here, but this part, pistol grip itself, is a little bit too wide. That's because there's a bit of a size variation between the width of the frame here and the rest of the uh, pistol grip, because as you can see, basically once it gets to this little bevel here it looks like it, the uh the whiff of this frame goes down up i think a total of five millimeters i'm looking at this right and i remember i i had uh made this a little bit wider when i extended this part of the barrel back and i made it five millimeters wider than it was or that it was, uh, I think, two centimeters wide. So I have this at two centimeters right now. Turn on flipping. That works. Change that shape profile. T. There's my angle. <laughs> Try to figure out which way it wants me to go to. Let's just set that. Re reset that. 0.5. Okay. Right, we'll change the profile right here. And increase the number of cuts. Segments. Okay.
Honestly, because yeah, this would get a little bit. We should have extended that out when we still had the uh, solidify uh, solidify modifier. All right, no problem. Let's set this back to global. Because even though the, uh, the whiff of this does go down on the frame, it's got the um, the wooden pistol grip frames on it, and then and then the mag is sort of matched with the width of that. Actually, it's the base, the metal base of the frame does it. Okay, all right. Just taking close examination of the reference. Looks good. And why not? Let's give this a uh, bevel. Get that for that edge. Selected the cutter. Hey, what's going on, Dead Polish? Actually, there's two different types of uh, trigger guards that I'm looking at at these at 14 reference. One is just a complete circle. I mean, it's a totally just a circular trigger guard, and it looks like, I don't know, it looks like it would be painful to actually get your finger in it. And then the other one has this sort of profile where it looks like it's got a little bit of extra room that they tooled it for right here. But you know what? I am going to take that. Let's lower the thickness on this even more. Maybe we should apply this solidify and make the rest of the shape. Wait, there was a part that I hit, I remember. No, not that one. That one. might have to do some I think we have to do some boolean work to get this right
first let's go ahead and create this little bevel section here Some weirdness happening. Let's see. Add ons. Most of the add ons that I'm using in this are going to be linked in the description. I do make use out of a uh, hard ops box cutter from time to time. And especially when it gets into anything for game assets, retop a flow, and then um, a lot of UV add-ons. In fact, there's probably a, quite a few other UV add-ons. Packmaster is probably one of the most important. Uh, text tools, there's quite a few. It's going to be an interesting shape to create.
Just a little bit of tweaking. Probably need to go about another way to do this uh, trigger guard here. Okay. These are not working for the time being. Let's go ahead and I'll start with Going to the wrong delete. Delete edge. Connect those. Or subdivide this maybe twice. Just get this shape profile correct.
still need to borrow from the main frame of this gun anyways. should have done earlier. We'll see how much uh, Blender ends up hating me for all these end guns in the end. Let's see him get them. Alright. Can we do a first save it? Thin mesh right there because it's got some non manifold geometry. But hey, if we're looking at it from this side, it looks good. But uh, yeah, yeah, we should probably fix that. Let me just undo that boolean real quick. face. There we go. I'm going to 
use a duplicate of one of these. So only bring it down about a millimeter or two. How tight is this trick? Try to look at some reference in this real quick. First, give this one a pebble. Give, oh, we're gonna apply this little pie here. All right now, let's do it, of course. We don't need to apply this little pie because we can do it non destructively. do it on that edge so I'll set the limit method to wait all right let's go with that now that is looking pretty good let me hide these cutters There we go. Told you we would do it at least somewhat non-destructively. Actually, you know what? This might be kind of easy. Back to Act Development, and actually, let's eyeball it first. Yeah, we can basically just eyeball this.
just give the edge a little bit of a bevel. Might be time to start collapsing some some of these pretty soon. At least in terms of uh, bullions. Well, let's just uh, let's just finish a few other little things that probably need to be blocked out. To find better reference for this little uh, rear sight picture, like getting a good angle on it on anything that I'm looking at, because the older ones, the uh, older ones from the Japanese Russo bar, the uh, Papa Nambu, it has like um, little elevation diopter sights on it, kind of like you would see almost on like an AK, but on the uh, Type 14, they're small, 
Okay. All right. I see it. Actually, I'll do them as a part that it'll just have to get a unioned later on. So I'll just drag this back here and scale this down just as a little placeholder uh, rear sight for right now. A few other uh, Boolean operations to go. Just get as much of this done non-destructively as possible.
let's slow that. Creating a little bit of an internal face right there. Uh, yeah. That's probably because of the cutter that I used. Let's just get rid of that non manifold geometry. Delete that face. Hide the cutters again. All right. Weird plane is gone. All right, cool, good. And we can still adjust the size of that if need be. Let's do another cylinder lower this to a 12 sided rotate that this on one side. And then make a duplicate of it. through both sides. Do it with a mirror. Yeah. But it looks like it's interfering a little bit with this uh, with this bevel. So what if we drag it after the bevel? Okay.
All right, what do we need to work on here? That's not going to work. Just uh, thinking of a hard and fast way to do this bevel right here, but we'll just do it after we collapse all of those other bullions. Let's do a little, let's do a little screw. Drag that into place. Let's scale it up. We're doing 12 sided cylinders.
know, this is a cheap and simple way to do a little flathead screw, but it'll work. May not subdivide the best, but I think it'll be okay. Individual origin, median point, no. Individual origin, global, okay.
the ejector on the top of the gun now. This is of course the boolean object that we're going to use. Actually, and let's look at a little reference for this. <clears throat> yep, yeah, looks Looks like I can cut straight through this barrel. Actually, I think I will uh, duplicate off another one of these just to be used as a cutter later on. Separate that from the selection. And we'll do this non-destructively. We'll add a bevel. Put this a lot lower. And we'll set it to weight. I just want these two edges weighted. And now let's up this a bit. some really good cutaway drawings that I'm using as a reference so it's actually pretty easy to get a good look at some of these parts
question. Damn it. We'll actually uh, do some editing to this uh, Boolean object right here. Since we know the bullet gets chambered around here, so we know it's eight millimeters right here, and then this expands. So, what are the dimensions? Let me see. What are the dimensions of the eight by twenty-two? We get a little schematic of that. All right. So, yeah, should, I'm just gonna search it. Eight by 22 bamboo. Because the cartridge has a little bottleneck on it. Here we are. Hey, what's going on? See, this is where I could get into doing a lot more detail than what's necessary for a game asset. And I'm not sure if that's something I even really want to concern myself with. But is this part even partially hidden?
Simon's left side. That whole center gets kind of cut out there. I could probably just do that with Williams and then just not apply the Bullions that have nothing to do with this thing as a game asset. But that could also be a little bit tricky. development on. Not good. Leave a lot of uh, end gun cleanup later. But let's see. Yeah, right now we are doing a World War II era Japanese Nambu Type 14. A lot of people were guessing, uh, you know, German Luger, close, but not quite. This is a, this is the 8i22 Japanese Imperial Military Service pistol, or at least one of the main ones. WW2. And if you see me looking over here for a while from time to time, I'm just giving a bit closer examination of all my reference.
Yeah, that's true. Hey, Ivan, what's going on? at it this whole time from this one side we need to make sure we're not missing any important details on the other side also got to do this little lanyard loop and whatever this little clip is on the front of the gun what is that If that's something for safety or holstering i'm not sure i need to get a closer look at this yeah yeah uh we're doing pretty good on the block like i said there's a few things that i kind of need to Collapse some of the modifiers to do, but that's looking pretty good. And then from there, I just kind of start working on applying the high poly modifiers. If you haven't seen my whole just high poly workflow video, that's basically what I'm going to do. It's just the bevel, sub D, and remesh. What was I doing? Oh yeah, this little selector here. Okay, simple enough. Or it should be.
for the most part, it looks like we're matching with our reference on both sides, which is good. needs to be one-sided. There we go. Switch to active element, scale it on what I want. A huge cube on top. You mean just uh, this? I just usually drop this in as a scale reference. I type in the overall length of the handgun and maybe something else like a barrel length and it's, I just reference that for scale. But I also have my cutters collection which a large portion of this we have done from the beginning in this stream was done I'd say uh, semi non-destructively. A lot of it's all done with uh, modifiers even this whole like this center frame here. It's a plane. It's just a it's just a plane object with a solidify, a number of bullions, and a mirror modifier for symmetry. So yeah, as much as possible, I'm trying to do this non-destructively, but that's not like something I'm super strict on adhering to. But especially for this bug out, I probably like to do it as much as possible.
this little lanyard loop on the back of it. Try to see if I'm looking at the reference correctly. There is some sort of cutout on the back of this gun. Collect a whole bunch of reference, but there's still a few uh, difficult parts to check out. Oh, okay. I see how that works. I also try to find as much good reference as possible, but I know that some of the pictures I'm looking at here have got to be airsoft guns.
at this button right here, now that I look at it from this side, I'm trying to see, is this the safety switch? Yes, it is the safety switch. I'm assuming. And the other lever is for takedown. It's going to need quite a bit of cleanup once I collapse all these little bullions. So there's some work that needs to be done to kind of the hilt of the pistol grip, but that might require collapsing some of these bullions on this pistol frame here, and to start working on that destructively. So is there anything else that I need to get done before I start collapsing stuff? Okay, there's this little, this little like lanyard clip on the front of the gun. I'm trying to find some reference of a gun that actually has this little lanyard thing attached. We might even model out the uh, the lanyard as well. Alright, so that's gonna be done with another with another bullion. Our snapping features will do to face or is it face or is it volume I think it's face face align rotation to target project individual elements all right snapping's on no volume not aligning rotation to target. Connect face culling. OK, 
Okay, that knows what I'm trying to do. Maybe it's just because this part's constructed out of so many modifiers. Because, oh yeah, because that thing's getting all distorted right there. Now that wants the snaps. All right. Where were you earlier?
Make sure that's not clipping into the magazine here. Doesn't look like it. To active element, drag it out just a little bit. That works.
just hide our cutters for a little bit. Previous trigger guard frame that I did. Gonna, let's see. Yeah, I'll just shove that in cutters for now. Actually, let's see. I'll probably do this bevel. Uh, up here non-destructively as well. All right. Did I have a previous cutter I was using? No. So let's take this. Part. I'm going to separate that selection, clean this of all the little bullions I have on it. And let's go ahead and bring that flush with that little rear sight right about there. We'll scale it on the y-axis. All right, let's, I, let's see if this is going to work. I don't know if it is. All right, so let's give this a bevel increase the size on that and we only want it to be on this edge so we'll switch it to weight and let's give it several how many segments of pain do we need on this first so let me get rid of that mark let's go out of edit mode apply the solidify there's no weird hidden geometry okay all right so let's mark that edge let's do this at two
Try it destructively. Okay, close, but I don't, I don't know if that's really passable for what we're going for. No, no, it looks pretty good. All right, you know what? Looks like done with the block out, I think. I think I'm about to call it for now because I need to take a short break myself, but yeah, okay. With just about all the major parts blocked out, we should, it should be pretty easy to just start heading into all our high poly detailing. We're gonna do, of course, uh, Float geometry for the grips and then 
for the serial numbers and other uh, decals. Oh, magazine. Magazine is still another separate task we we'll still need to do. Quite a bit of work on that, but that won't take too long. Seriously. I'm create a small firing pin or something right here. Okay. What else? What else to block out real quick?
make a sub collection maybe for just all the parts in the magazine. This part, this part, part. and that. All right, so just three parts so far that I have for that. Let's create a new collection magazine just so that I can have these on a sort of a quick selection. Drop that into our current scene collection which I'm going to go ahead and just rename to, well, this is going to be the high poly, so I'll just call it high poly for now. dissolve all of these extra little edges here. You guys can see some of the other uh, reference I got for the magazine right here. I'm dropping another picture just so that I know what I'm working with. See if I have another. Hey, Wilfred. Wilfred? I don't know if I'm saying that right. Still a solidified plane? Yeah, it is. 
I don't know if I want that anymore. Let's go ahead and collapse that. Take this. Actually, let's get rid of... Does it have non-manifold? No, because it still has the mirror on it, so it doesn't even recognize it. Just go down the center here. Eat those faces. Turn on clipping.
that's supposed to be mirrored on both sides. So let's go ahead, just collapse the mirror modifier. Deselect this side. There we go. Delete these faces. about ready to leave all of this here. Okay, all right. Yeah, block out. Yeah, block up mostly all finished. It's looking pretty good. All right, we will be able to get working on this pretty quickly. Hopefully tomorrow. Hopefully tomorrow I should have a good amount of time to work on this. We might even get this entire weapon design project done this week. I think that's possible if I'm 
because I am going to be probably getting enough time to do it. So, all right, cool. Hey, thanks to everyone who came and hanged out for this whole little live stream. It's been already about three and a half hours. Wow, that's pretty good. Uh, once again, if you're interested, check out the Discord and the Community Challenge section. Uh, the current theme is to create a health item. If you're in a video game, it's the sort of thing you know that you need when you're bleeding out. I got the idea. I'm in Escape from Tarkov, run into extraction, bled out and died. Could use a lot more health items. Hey, thanks for hanging out. Had a good time. Good luck on whatever other uh, design projects everyone else is working on. Uh, if you want, feel free to share them. I love to see that stuff. And until next time, hopefully tomorrow. All right.